Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. Praise your Hashem, Shalom, Shalom. It's about every year. Each of our and why first want to give us praise to how about Shem Yahweh Shah and to the elders of HOI, double honors to all the brothers and sisters as well, just doing the work of the most high. So today is gonna to come with a quick scripture lesson pertaining to endurance. And first of all, we're gonna start with Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Right? It's Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Whatsoever you do in the word or deed. Do all in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai, giving thanks to Yahweh and the Father by Him. So we always got to give praise to the Most High first, and His only begotten Son Yahweh Shai. Give all due honors and credits to them. All right, now let's get into what? Endurance. So we'll start with Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. It's the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So the problem is our people has been chosen as a nation of Israel and specifically the men of Israel has been chosen to be what? To be soldiers of Yahweh Shah. Now to be a soldier of Yahweh Shah, you have to be what? Disciplined, you have to endure, right? Through all trials and tribulations and you gotta continue in the faith. So part of endurance is what? You have to be disciplined and that's very important because the scripture even says in Revelations, patience of the saints. You gotta have patience. And endurance is a very important part. Right? So now let's go to let's see. Let's go to first. As a matter of fact, yeah, let's go to Sarak. It's the book of Sarak, chapter two and verse one. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So the Lord said, prepare your soul for temptation and become a servant. Because now that you're serving the Most High in His truth, the devil's going to try to come at you heavily. All right? When you was in the world, the devil didn't give a damn. You know, like David said in Psalms 51, you know, he was shaping in iniquity. Right? He was born into this world in sin. But now that you're in the truth, the devil understands that you know the truth and that you know that the devil is around you, right? Sin, iniquity, lust, envy, jealousy, right? We deal with that every day. But now you understand that that's a sin, which is breaking God's commandments. And to prove that, we'll go to 1 John. Let's see, 1 John... This is 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So you got to understand, Israel was given the law, like it says in Psalms 147, 19. So since we was given the law, we the ones that can transgress against the Most High by sinning. So now we know that sin is breaking God's commandments. So in order to keep God's commandments, we have to stop sinning. And that's by keeping His commandments. Right? So now go back to Sirach chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thyself for temptation. And temptation is what? The lust, envy, right? The wickedness of sin. Set thy heart aright, and the heart means the mind. Right? Constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Right? The heart means the mind. And the thing with the heart, it can be wicked in these times. Like, for example, let's go to Jeremiah 17, and we'll go to verse 9. It says, Jeremiah 17 and verse 9, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked who can know it. Right? So the Lord said, the heart of man is wicked above all things. So you don't trust in your heart, right? You got to go to what? To the laws of the Most High. Like it says in Proverbs chapter 3, Lean not unto thy own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all thy heart. All right, so set thy heart aright, constantly endure, and make not haste in time of trouble. So you have to endure in this, in this truth, in this war. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. All right, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. All right, like for example, let's go to, let's see, matter of fact, let's go to, there you go, Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Bless all they which are persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven verse 11 bless are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely 
for my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which are before you. So the Lord said, you're blessed when people speaking bad about you, right? Throwing dirt on your name, like they did with Paul, like even Israel did with Moses, right? Like in the book of Numbers, you know, many different things, man. You know, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, right? You had Israel talking bad against their own people, even with Yahweh Shai, in the book of John, chapter 19, right? When they said we have no king but Caesar, and they gave up the only begotten son. So there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to go through in these last days. And, you know, we're going to be persecuted, man. And it's going to get crazy, right? Like, for example, we see John chapter 16 and verse 1. It says, These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall in the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you would think that he doeth God's service. So speaking about those that's going to be Carrying the spirit of Satan in these last days. That's going to try to betray those that are keeping the faith. That's keeping the commandments of the Lord. Because in this world, what? This world is wicked right now because it's under Satan authority. The spirit of Satan or the prince of air is ruling America right now. And not just America, but oppressing the whole world. So the nation of Israel, right? Those that the, men, the Most High have chosen to be a light unto this world of darkness, right? We have to be strong in his faith. The brothers and the sisters that's walking in this faith we have to be very strong and we got to endure constantly endure all right so now let's go to sarak chapter two and cleave unto him verse three sarak two and three cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end so the lord said to what to keep his commandments walk in his ways walk in his laws right so thou mayest be increased in thy last end, which is speaking about what? The kingdom of heaven. Because it says in 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, it says Jacob, uh, Esau is the beginning, end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it. Right? And that's going to be the end of the so-called white man's reign of supremacy. But in the meantime, we have to continue to endure. Right? So it says verse 4, What's that was brought upon thee? Take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. So the Lord is saying, your trials and tribulations, you got to be patient when you're going through these trials and tribulations. Right? Be patient when thou are changed to a lower state. So when you come in this truth, you might lose your job. You know? You might lose your, your family members. You might break away your wife. A divorce. You know? Your children might start to hate you. You know? It'll, it'll seem like the whole world is against you. Right? You feel like you're down and out. But that's the most high using that to what to humble you right and to give you a kind of a restart in this wicked world because guess what this world that we're shaped in is iniquity right like a product of your own environment for example you grow up in a hood and and all you all you see around you is what is drugs drug dealers right killers gangsters people in different gangs and all this and that right stealing fighting right shootouts all different things you see, man, just from growing up in the hood. And you start to get used to it, you start to get desensitized to it. But it's not a good thing. You're not supposed to be growing up as a kid in like a dangerous environment like that. But we're used to that, right? Because like it says in Psalms 51, it says, let me see. There you go, Psalms 51 and verse 5. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. All right, so David even said he was shaped in iniquity. Why? Because through, through the spirit of Adam, right, sin have come into the world. Basically, Adam and Eve. And now, sin equals what? Death. And that's the thing. All right? Like, for example, let me get Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Yahweh Shai. Hamashiach, our Lord, which in the sin is death. So now, if you go back to Sirach, chapter 2, and verse 4. What's I was brought upon thee? Take cheerfully, be patient with thou, change to a lower state. All right? Because the Most High is what? He's trying you as gold in the fire. All right? So the Most High is going to try you. So let's see that. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Right? So Laurel said, you're supposed to be tried in the fire. You're going to be tested. 
like I said in the book of James, it says, trust not every spirit. You're going to be tested, man. Right? So you got to be tried for this because the reward is plentiful, which is also the kingdom of heaven. And gold is tried in the fire because what? The most I have to test you. All right? So let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. Start at verse... Five. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 5 And ye have forgotten the exaltation which speaketh unto you as unto children My son despise not thou the chastening of the Lord Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him So the Lord said don't despise his chastening right? He's going to have to try He's going to have to build you up Mentally, physically and spiritually So you're going to be tried right? You're going to go to situations You're going to go to hard times And it's all for the betterment Because what doesn't kill you makes you stronger Right? And the Lord said, Don't faint when thou rebuke of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So every 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 person that's coming into the true or female, the Lord is gonna test them. There ain't gonna be no easy walk. Right? Ain't nothing gonna be given to you in uh, easy or you know, or free. Nah, you gotta work for it, just like anything in life. You gotta do your best, you gotta work for it. Right? For whom the Lord love, be chastening for scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? So the Lord said, if you endure, like it says Matthew 24, 13, endure unto the end. If you endure this chastening, right? This life that we're living in right now, the, the trials of tribulation, the sufferings, right? Even Yahweh said in Revelation 2 and 9, he said, I know thy works in tribulations and poverty, but thou art rich, right? How wish I know the tribulations we're going through? But guess what? It's all for what? The kingdom of heaven. It's all for salvation. So verse 8, But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore are all partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. So the Lord said in Proverbs, He said, Train up a child. And the way he shall go, he shall not depart from thee. So you're going to have to get tested, man. It's like a parent with a child, man. Right? He's going to try to make sure the child walks in a straight and narrow path. Not to be wicked. Right. He even said it's Sirach chapter, I think it's 13. Let me see. Let's see. No, it's Sirach at 30. Yeah, it's Sirach at 30. All right, there you go. Sirach chapter 30 and verse 2. He that chastises his son shall have joy in him and shall rejoice with him among his acquaintance. Right? So you shall have joy in your children. Right? And you teach them correctly. If they go off, you're gonna have to you have to you know you're gonna have to correct them, right? And shall rejoice with him among his acquaintances, that means amongst his people, his peers, his friends. He teaches his son is he that teaches his son grieveth the enemy, and before his friends he shall rejoice with him. Right? Because you know, we already know damn well Esau is, is the enemy of the nation of Israel. And not just him, all the all the other nations, right? So they ain't gonna get away with, with, with the wickedness that's going on. Right? And before his friends he shall rejoice with him. Though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. For you have left one behind him that is like himself. See, you have left one behind him that is like himself. Like the saying goes, like father, like son. You know, you got Eve talking about you just like your daddy. You know, but usually that, that's used in a negative term. But you know, we're using this in a righteous term, right? So though his father die, yet he is as though he were not dead. For he have left one behind him that is like himself. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced to him. And when he died, he was not sorrowful, you see? Because he trained them well. And the way you train your child is by keeping the laws of God. Right? Teaching children the laws of the Most High. So they can be what? They can, they can be up top in this, in this wicked world of society. They can be at the best position, you know? Not just enduring in this world, but, but but being at the um being at the throne with the high powers through the spirit of the Lord in the heavenly kingdom. Alright? Yeah, it's locking for the noise. We're in transit right now. Alright? I love he saw and rejoiced in him when he died, he was not sorrowful. Right? So he's not sad when he when he's gone because he knows his son is going to do better than him. And that's a blessing, because guess what? That parent did his job, right? That's all a parent can ask for. They doing their job, right? So let's see. Let's go to Sarak. Chapter 2 and verse 5. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. 
right? So gold is tried in the fire. Like it says in Ecclesiastes, you know, let me see, I think it's Ecclesiastes. There you go. Lamentations 4 and 1. How has the gold become dim? How is the most fine gold changed? The stones of the sanctuary are poured out in the top of every street, right? Because that gold is speaking about who? Israel, right? And at this, at this point, it's speaking about the men of the Lord. You got a gold that's tried in the fire. So the most high is testing us. Right? The world might say we we we, we uh killers and, and savages and thugs and like like Hillary Clinton and them say super predators. But in the eyes of the Lord, we are the sons of the living God. Right? So we're gonna have to endure, man. Let me get Exodus chapter 4, verse 22. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel's my son, even my firstborn. See that? So we are the sons of the living God, man. Right? And like it says right here, let me get Psalms chapter 13. Let me see. Psalm chapter 12. Where is that? Thick as. Oh, not Isaiah. Yeah. There you go. You got to be here. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man that the, than the golden wedge of Ophir. Right, it's speaking about the men of the Lord. Most high is gonna make a man more precious than found gold. Cause what? Isaiah 33 and 6, it says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time. Right? And that's only for who? The nation of Israel. That wisdom and knowledge is only for the nation of Israel. And most particularly, it's speaking about the men of the Lord in these last days. Right? Most high is gonna lift up the men of the Lord and give them back their damn respect. Right? As as the representative representative representations of the most high on this earth to enforce his law statute of commandments with his wicked society All right so the law said what you have to endure you have to be tried as gold in a fire All right because the lord even says what let me get sirach chapter 6 in verse 7 if thou wouldest get a friend prove him first and be not hasty to credit him for some man is a friend for his own occasion when i abide in the, in the day of thy trouble and there was a friend who being turned to enmity and strife would discover thy reproach. The Lord said, Thou wilt be friend, get a friend, you gotta prove him first. So guess what? Same as the Lord did with Abraham, he gotta prove him as a friend. The Lord is doing that with the nation of Israel. He gotta prove us as a friend first. Right? There can't be no fake outs, man. You know, the scripture says adjustment falls seven times to get back up. Right? You're gonna have to endure, man. You're gonna fall sometimes, man. We're gonna Go to trials and tribulations. We're going to slip up, man. You know? But the Lord said, get right back up. Endure. Keep pushing. Don't stop. Right? Let me see. So, let me see. Uh, let me see. Yeah, we'll go to Sirach. Right? It's a good one right here. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 12. Woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinners that go of two ways. So death and destruction to those that are fearful, right? That's scared because the Lord didn't give us the spirit of fear, right? And faint hands in the center that go of two ways. So the Most High give you the spirit of fear. He give you the power of love and strength, right? The Lord said, don't be scared like said Joshua 1 and 8. You can't be fearful, right? And it says, woe unto him that is faint hearted for he believeth not. And you got to believe. In the most high. You gotta believe in these laws and commandments. Right? Therefore shall he not be defended and how do you believe in the most high? Let's go to Sirach chapter 34 and verse 24. It says, He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandments. So that's how you believe in the Lord. So when a person say they know the most high, right? They believe in God, they know God knows their heart. Yeah, the Lord said, Yeah, we know your heart, your heart is wicked. Jeremiah 17 and 9. But you'll believe in the Lord by keeping his commandments. All right? So now let's go back to Sarah chapter 2. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. And the Most High is going to defend you if you keep his commandments. Because how, you, how is he going to defend you? Psalms chapter 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So the Lord is going to send angels to defend you. And deliver you. Alright? And we can prove that again. Let me get uh, Psalms 91 in verse 
Psalms 91 and verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hand, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. So the Lord's going to send angels to defend you. Right? So that's how the Most High is going to defend you. But that's if you believe. Because faith without works is dead. Right? We walk by faith, not by sight. So it says, Sarak chapter 2 and verse 13. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Therefore shall he not be defended. So you got to have faith and believe in the Lord. The Most High is going to protect you. Right? Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Because remember, this is a this is a marathon, it's not a race. Right? But just like a race or a marathon, look what the Lord said. Alright, let me get first Corinthians chapter nine. Let me see. Verse twenty four. Know ye not that we that they which won in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. Right? So this is a marathon. You gotta run. You gotta endure. Right? Endure for what? That kingdom of heaven. Right? And every man that strives for the mastery is temporary in all things. Now they do it to obtain an incorruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. Right? And so lucky for the noise. Everything, but they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we do it to obtain an incorruptible crown. Speaking about those in this world, right? They're trying to get the riches of this world, They're trying to enjoy the riches of this world, the life, you know, the glamour, the stars, the celebrities, right? All these rappers. Right? They're trying to enjoy the riches of this world, but the most high said no. Nah. nah, hell no. Nah. We we don't, we don't give a damn about this place. This place is almost done, man. Right? We waiting for the kingdom of heaven. Like our forefathers did in Zephaniah. They was waiting for Yahweh Shah. Right? Like in the book of Genesis, all through the Bible. All our forefathers all waiting for the kingdom of heaven. Right? And we're gonna show you that right now. Acts chapter one, you see. Acts chapter one and verse six. When they therefore will come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will that at time at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? See? So even even <laughs> even the men of Lowe's asking at that time, man, are, are we gonna get the kingdom now? Like, are you gonna give it back to us? Like, damn man, we've been suffering, man. You know, captivity after captivity after captivity. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. So that's core right there. I wish I said it's not it's not for you to know, man. You know, you're gonna have to still endure. You gotta endure, right? It's not for you to know. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem and all Judea, and in Samaria unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So we gotta endure, man. Right? Lord says he's gonna be prophets unto the world, man. Do the work of the Most High. You gotta endure, man. It's, it's, a, it's very important. Patience is key, right? And we'll show you that also as well. Let's see. Was it? It's not the times for the seasons. You shall receive power. So, let's see. What was the other one? Yeah, let's go back to Sirach. Well, unto you that have lost patience, what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? Right? So, the most I say, destruction if you lost patience, man. And do for that kingdom. Continue to push, man, for that kingdom. Alright? So. Let me see. So let me get 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58. Right? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and move, but always abound in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. So you got to endure in the work of the Lord through the Spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Continue to push, continue to endure. Why? Because Acts chapter 14. Verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and sorting them to continue the faith that we must do much tribulation to the kingdom of heaven. So it's not going to be an easy walk. All right? But remember. So it says, Isaiah chapter 48, verse 10. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it? For how should I name my name be polluted? I will not give my glory unto another. All right? So basically, the Lord have chosen you, and he's going to refine you as gold in the, in the fire. All right? In the furnace of affliction and adversity, like it says Acts 14 and 22. Verse 12, hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first, I am also the last. 
So the Most High is the one that's going to get us out of this captivity. The Lord is the one that chose us, and the Most High is the one that's going to deliver us. So like I said again, all spirit, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shah, endurance is key. Continue to stay diligent, and let's continue to push and do the work of the Lord. Kwam Yashua, Shalom.